To the female student joining our happy home this year, the common colloquial name for you is toad, similar to bird, tart, sheila, broad or dame. There's just one piece of advice, mingle, mingle, mingle. That advice comes from the handbook for new students at the Hawkesbury Agricultural College, New South Wales. The first female students entered the college three years ago, and since then the girls have proved that they can handle the practical side of an agricultural college education every bit as well as the men. The Hawkesbury Agricultural College is only 40 miles west of Sydney, so it attracts city girls as well as girls from the country. Angela Roberts is 19 and comes from Sydney. She and Gwen Cruys, who is a country girl from the northern tablelands of New South Wales, are in the second year of the three-year agricultural diploma course. One day out of five, they spend doing practical farm work, the same work as the male students. This can involve anything from a 5 a.m. start in the milking shed to a stint here in the wool shed. This year, for the first time, girls are allowed to live on the college campus. Temporary lack of space, however, has limited the number of female students living in to 12. Most of the other 20 girls at the college live in self-contained cottages here at Hobartville Stud, about two miles away. Sue Adcock, a second-year food technology student from Gosford, north of Sydney, says she prefers the freer life at Hobartville. Philip Warrington asked her what problems she had faced coming into the male-dominated environment of the college. Well, haven't been that many, really. The main one has been the resentment by some of the boys that are, have got really traditionalist attitudes that their fathers have been through or their brothers have been through and they think that girls in Hawkesbury don't really mix. What form did their resentment take at the beginning? Well, they just didn't really want to associate with us all that much. They were cordial uh, to the point of saying hello to us, but they wouldn't think of coming around here, you know, just to have coffee or something with the girls. That would be quite a question. Has this changed very much now? Well, I think so, because most of the traditionalist boys have left. They left last year when we first came here. Um, but this year, there's not quite so many that are like this, and most of them you don't think that we're that bad after all. Do you have to do exactly the same sort of work as the men at the college? Oh, yes, we have to. That's something we had to prove that we could do, really, to most of the boys. Otherwise, we definitely wouldn't have been accepted. What sort of things do you do? Oh, we have to lug around 10-gallon milk cans and... Oh, pick up heavy tanks and things like that. Does it doesn't really worry us. I mean, if you can't do it, you don't have to do it. But if you can, well, boys sort of accept you just a little bit more. I believe there must be still some resentment as they call you toads. Oh, I don't think so, not really. It's become a, a name of endearment, I think, really. The, the Hawkesbury girls are toads, and that's it. What exactly is a toad? A toad's just like a chick, a bird, a sheila, anything else like that. Although today toad can be a term of endearment, it wasn't always. But things have come a long way since 1969, when the first two female students braved what had been for almost 80 years an all-male preserve. Now, with the girls living in, acceptance has gone a step further. Femininity's colours are nailed firmly to the masthead. If acceptance within the college is a problem overcome, what sort of a future is there for the girls graduating from the college? In a depressed rural economy, the opportunities for women are limited. Girls doing food technology courses face a better future, perhaps, than the girls who are doing the agriculture course. In the college dining hall, the girls sit singly or in small groups among the men. It's a deliberate policy. When the first girls came to the college, they decided that if they didn't take the initiative and mix with the men socially, as well as at work, they would be forced into some sort of ghetto. Philip Wallington asked the principal of Hawkesbury Agricultural College, Dr Graham Swain, what problems women graduating from the college would face. They will have the same sort of problems that we'll see in the next few years of, of less jobs in agriculture than there have, has been over the last 10 years. But I, I'm, not, I'm pretty optimistic about the opportunities. I think that as far as the girls here doing our technology programs, uh, 
then the future is very bright because this is a growing field. Uh, the relationship between industry and agriculture is uh, very um, uh, it's active at the moment. What about the girls doing ag, though? Well, the girls doing agriculture, uh, I guess, are going to have a, a somewhat more difficult time in the short term. But there again, uh, we have a, an increasing number of students here who wish to go uh, teaching. Uh, and I would think some of the girls doing agriculture will want to do this, and I see no problems for them. For students doing food technology courses, Hawkesbury College provides completely up-to-date facilities, which include a model canning and food processing plant. The plant has another function, to provide much of the food for the college dining hall. With low overheads, boarding and tuition at the college is remarkably cheap, $12 a week. The plant is a familiar scene for Sue Adcock. Her father is the manager of one of Australia's largest fruit cooperatives. The Hawkesbury plant produces some 10,000 cans of fruit and vegetables a year. It also turns out quick frozen vegetables, jams, pickles and sauces. All the produce is grown at the college. Away from the field, the agriculture students get a thorough grounding in the principles of farm management and the agricultural sciences. As well as learning the techniques of practical farming, they are taught to maintain and service the various pieces of farm machinery. For the engine. You can see this occurring on these diagrams here. Few of the girls probably will ever be in the situation where their day-to-day -day livelihood depends on looking after a tractor. They will, however, be working for state departments of agriculture and dealing with the day-to-day -day problems of the man on the land. This sort of knowledge is an invaluable asset. Depends on the fitness. Two girl graduates from the college already have spent a successful year working with New South Wales firms as food technologists. A girl who can spend all day under a hot sun ploughing a field and do that job every bit as well as a man is not the sort of girl who's likely to fail. In three years, women have become an accepted part of the life at Hawkesbury Agricultural College. The next big test is how well they will be accepted in the stiff competition which exists in the rural economy. If their performance at Hawkesbury College is any yardstick, there will be opposition. But the women will make a niche for themselves in what has been yet another all-male preserve. 